Video Games and Hippocampus Dependent Learning. The topic of my presentation today will be about teens and video games. Since there is much misinformation about how playing video games degrades our brains, I wanted to offer a different perspective and present an article which suggests that games can actually have a positive impact on our brains. This article was written and researched by West, Konishi, and Bobo. West is an associate professor in the Department of Psychology at the University of Montreal. Konishi received her PhD in neuroscience from McGill University, and Bobo is a researcher at the Douglas Research Center, as well as a professor in the Department of Psychiatry at McGill University. This article seems like it's primarily for neuroscientists to learn how video games can have an effect on hippocampal integrity. I believe this is useful for CSHIP teachers as well, because a significant proportion of our students play video games. It is useful to know how their popular pastimes can affect their brains. The hippocampus is used for transferring memories from short-term to long-term. It knows how to piece different chunks of memory together to form one cohesive memory. With enough practice of a topic, the hippocampus will start storing the information in our long-term memory banks. So how do video games factor into this? It turns out that some genres of video games have more impact on our brains than others. The two main genres they talk about in the article are 3D platformers that don't contain maps versus action games that do have maps. Games that don't provide a map such that the player must build an internal cognitive map are the ones that stimulate the hippocampus. When people play games where a set series of tasks has to be performed repetitively, this uses a non-hippocampal part of the brain that has to do with rigid memorization. This is known as response learning. The problem with response learning is that it is very inflexible. Any change to the set series of tasks results in the person getting confused quickly. When people play games where they must observe their environment in order to build internal cognitive maps in their mind via exploration of the game world, this is what uses the hippocampus. If dropped in a random location in the game world, a person with a strong hippocampus would have the spatial learning abilities to figure out where they are and where they need to go. The authors speculate game designers can take both response learning and spatial learning into consideration. Games which employ more response learning approaches tend to be more popular among gamers. Once given an in-game map, they no longer have to construct an internal cognitive map to know where to go. While reading this article, this made me think of Ramsden's surface versus deep learning approaches. The surface approach is analogous to response learning. It involves much repetition and is not a very flexible way of learning. Now, let's contrast that with the deep approach where students can critically think no matter the situation. With deep learning, this is more analogous to spatial learning. From what I can see, playing open world exploration games where the player needs to keep track of where they are in the world in relation to other landmarks is a sign of deep learning, which will lead to the growth of hippocampal gray matter. Hippocampal gray matter is important because it has been associated with a reduced risk of neuropsychiatric illnesses in younger adults. Examples include depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and Alzheimer's disease. The authors state that this research paper is based on data that is cross-sectional and not longitudinal. This means that the results are, at best, correlational. They state that they would like to conduct further research with prominent game designers to gather more data on games which can affect the hippocampus. Thank you very much.